Hello everybody, it is so good to be with you this morning. My name's the Reverend Tim Rose and from 2002 through to 2013 I was a part of church family there at St Saviour's uh, in Sunbury. It's a time in my life that I will always look back on uh, incredibly uh, fondly. I Of those 11 years, three of them I spent uh, as curate um, and another three I spent on the staff team at St Saviour's as well. So it always have a very, very special uh, place in my heart. Um, and I also know that um, a number of you have arrived at the church uh, in that time. And just to say to you guys, you have found a really, really special a uh, group of people uh, to be a part of and it is a, a true privilege to be a part of St Saviour's Sunbury so uh, thoroughly enjoy your time there and get the most out of it. This morning I'm going to talk to us about a subject that all of you are about to face and navigate and most of us at some point in our lives in a whole load of different contexts um, will navigate through as well and that is the whole subject of leadership change and we're going to look uh, through the uh, amazing first chapter uh, of the book of Joshua and see all that it has to say to us about leadership change. So let's pray um, as we uh, begin to look uh, at this passage and this subject for us all to navigate. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your leading and guiding spirit. We thank you for calling the Bowers to lead the St Saviour's family over the next uh, weeks, months and years. Father, we ask your blessing on them. And Lord, we ask your blessing on us as well, that you would open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear from you and to hear everything you say to us through Alan, that we would follow uh, his leadership and your leadership by the power of your Holy Spirit. And now, Lord, over the next few moments, would you open our hearts and minds to hear from your word? Lord, speak into our situations that we're going through right now. Bring strength, encouragement and comfort, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if you've heard of the top five or the list of the top five most stressful things you can do in life. If you've not heard of them, it's not like a league table, but these are just the top five. Now, they are getting married, moving house, death of a close relative, starting a new job and getting divorced. They are the top five most stressful things you can do. Now, for me personally, the uh, toughest one or the most stressful one I think I found is moving house. When you go from one physical place uh, to another, oh my goodness, like just the, the, um, the stress with uh, estate agents and solicitors and the chain, and then when it actually comes to the physical move um, of it, all those boxes and the packaging and then you get to the other end and somehow various things have disappeared and you don't know where they've gone and it, all of that stress when we moved seven years ago a camera disappeared with it a sim card and a data card and we lost all those photos never to be seen again so many things um that are really stressful uh when you move house it's a really stressful time but the minute you do, the minute you move, something changes. I'll never forget that feeling when we drove past St Saviour's and turned right to go up the A308 seven years ago. Something changed. It was different. Yes, we were moving physically to a new house, but almost something tangible had changed kind of in me that I almost couldn't quite put my finger on. The minute that Ron left St Saviour's, things changed. The moment David left St Saviour's in 2014, things changed. For those of you, and I know some of you that were around, been around a long, long time, and when Peter left in 2000, things changed. When leaders move on, things change. And leadership change can be a very stressful time. Because one of the things I've uh, discovered over the years, as I've got older, now 43 years old, still like to think of myself as young, was told in no uncertain terms on the recent Alpha course we've just run that I am quite old, uh, which was painful. Um, but I like to think of myself as young. But as we get older, change doesn't get easier, it gets harder. So how are we going to navigate 
this season that's to come. Never ceases to amaze me how extraordinary the Bible is that this chapter, Joshua chapter one, this book was written thousands and thousands of years ago, yet is so relevant to us today. Because just to remind myself, all scripture, Paul writes in Timothy, is God breathed. That he is the author through all of the other authors. It's his spirit that breathes right through this Bible. It's an incredible book of life that speaks to us and enriches us because it's God speaking through it. And Joshua chapter one is God speaking. And God says to Joshua, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. It's a really important thing for us to grasp not the fact, that, the fact that Moses is dead, but when the leadership changes, the old has gone, the new has come. The moment Peter walked out the door, the moment David walked out the door, the moment Ron walked out the door, things changed. And also God is saying to, to Joshua, he, he's dead. So there is a grieving process to go through. Some of us haven't grieved and let go former leaders in different places. I look back to bosses I had in the past and I sometimes really miss them. Think, oh, you know, it was, it was great back in the day. It wasn't really, you know, we all look back through kind of suspe um, suspected rose tinted spectacles and thinking life was great back then. It, we forget the bad things quite easily. Not the really bad stuff that tends to stick with us and it's harder to shift, but we forget the small stuff. And life is life. And if we continue to hold on to the past, we will never, ever experience the future and everything God has for us. We have to let go. We have to grieve well. We have to move on. For some of us, when leadership changes, it almost might be for us a good thing because we didn't really get on with that previous leader. I know that when I move here, some people will throw street parties, literally street parties, because they just don't like me. They never will. Um, I rub them up the wrong way. I don't look like a vicar. I don't act like a vicar. I don't do what they want me to do and they really don't like me and I have to come to terms with that. I have to love them as well. But some people won't like me. Some people won't have liked Ron. Some people won't have liked David. Some people won't have liked the vicars that came before. But we need to prepare ourselves. God says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, Joshua, get ready. And after letting go of the past, whether that's to mourn or to celebrate, and let's name it as it is, it's okay. We move on into the future by preparing ourselves and getting ready for what is to come. The new leader. And the Lord says to Joshua, prepare yourself to cross over into the land that I have for you. This is such an important point. And if you can take nothing else from this morning, please spend some time just thinking on this. Because when a new leader comes, there is a crossing over. Jess sent me a picture of just how the insiders and saviors uh, looks this morning. And it is full of food. The food bank doing incredible, incredible work. It wasn't like that in 2013. The crossing over has meant that the vision has changed from then. Well, let's kind of rephrase that. The vision hasn't changed really because it's all the same DNA, it's the same stuff, just gone in a slightly different direction. As Alan arrives, there will be a crossing over. But remember, it's not a crossing over into land. The difference in the Old Testament, and the New Testament, the Old Testament, is God calling his people to claim the promised land. The promised land of the New Testament becomes our hearts. That's one of the reasons that Jewish uh, leaders missed Jesus and didn't understand the Messiah because they missed the crossing over from land to heart. What a Joel prophesied all those years before, I'm going to take my law and not put it on tablets of stone, but write it on your heart. Young and old will know me. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. It's not about land. It's about heart and life. And as you cross over through Alan's leadership, God will call you to new people. There's loads of you um, 
now in the St. Saviour's family that weren't there seven years ago. Praise God for that. The Lord's led in a new direction and he's going to do it again now. He led in a direction through David. He led in a direction through Ron. He's going to lead in a direction through Alan. Prepare yourself to cross over to the new people. Prepare yourself for the change. Because there are people, and you can read it throughout the book of Joshua, that miss it. That didn't fully get into the promised land. Why? Because they grumbled and they moaned. And they said the classic. Ron didn't do it like this. David didn't do it like this. Peter didn't do it like this. However, all the other leaders apart, they didn't do it like this. No, they're not going to because they're not the same people. Friends, it's going to be different. Prepare yourself to cross over. And as you prepare yourself, tell yourself, I'm never going to utter that line. Oh, he didn't do it like that. No, because Alan's going to do it differently. And that's good. And that's right because this is a new season. So, what about you? Are you listening to the voice of God in this season? So you can stand on good ground. I know that Jess, that other wardens, that Richard, that Bishop Graham, that uh, Father Andrew at St Mary's, do you know what? They've heard the voice of God in this season. I truly believe it. So stand on that. But are you listening to the voice of God for you in this season? in this time as part of St Saviour's. As you listen to the voice of God, remember those five stressful things. Getting married. The Bowers have just done that. Moving house. The Bowers have just done that. Death of a close relative. Don't know whether that one has happened in the family. Starting a new job. That's just what they're doing. Let's pray that they never ever get divorced. So, but you've got three of those top five. Wow, think about the amount of stress in their lives right now. And so do the most amazing thing that God has taught us again and again through lockdown, that fifth fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Love, joy, love, joy, love, joy as well. But love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Friends, the best thing you can do over the weeks, months and possibly a couple of years ahead, folks, and actually forever, but especially in this season, is be kind to your leader and be kind to one another. Kindness is an extraordinary thing. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit fills us, as the Holy Spirit continues to fill you and lead you forward as a church family, there should be more and more kindness. Because just think about the amount of stress they're going through right now. Sky high. I don't know, they're looking after about 250 kids. I think they've got between them something extraordinary like that. I, you know, three is enough for me. I mean, how on earth they're going to navigate that on its own as well? I mean, it'll be incredibly exciting, but incredibly stressful as well. Listen, listen to ways you can be kind. Be kind to one another as well as much as you possibly can. Prepare yourself to cross over. Accept that change is constant. It happens. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. We know that. But accept it and prepare yourself. Get excited about what God is going to do through Alan and how you are going to be involved in that. How you are going to be a major part in that. Or you're going to be a major part in another part of God's vineyard, in another church community somewhere if he calls you on. Prepare yourself to cross over. And be strong and courageous. Be bold as you decide to go with Alan's leadership or you decide to move on. Be strong, be courageous, be kind and go and see lives changed. Men and women become followers of Jesus because that's what it's about. We're no longer winning land. We're winning hearts. And God has called the Bowers to lead you into the next season of your church family's life to win hearts, minds and lives in Sunbury and beyond. So let's take some time to pray now. Let's wait on God's spirit for a few moments. Just allow him to come. I'm recording this about 
10 days before it will go live. So this is quite an interesting one. But we're just going to wait on God's spirit. Spirit of God, would you move amongst us now in our homes, in offices, wherever it is we're listening to this. Probably in our homes, not generally many of us in offices right now. Spirit of God, would you come? Would you fill us? Straight away, I've got the word fear coming to mind. And the scripture says, perfect love casts out fear. If you're fearful of the future, fearful of the next season of the church's life, but fearful in your own situation, receive God's love. God's love is utterly unconditional. Spirit of God, fill you. Perfect love casts out all fear. Love, wash away that fear. Pour it in now. Pour out his spirit, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Flood you and fill you. And now receive God's peace. Peace that passes all understanding. It's not a worldly peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. The opposite fear is peace. Now receive the Lord's peace. Lord, come. Lord, come. Just let it come. Let God fill you with his peace. Let it come. Just in my mind's eye, just see an image of a dove coming and settling on you. Receive afresh God's peace for what is ahead. When you're peaceful, you can enjoy it. You don't have to fret, you don't have to stress. You can just enjoy it. Now just a sense of, Lord, release kindness in us. Lord, help us to be the kindest community. Help us to be the kindest season in the history of St. Saviour's. 120 years, however long that the church has been there now, Lord. May this be the kindest season of his existence. Would there be so much love and kindness that the church would just go from strength to strength. Receive his love. Receive his spirit. Goes in you to produce fruit, that fruit of kindness to one another and to the bowers. Calm, Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. We're now going to remind ourselves again of the death and resurrection of Jesus. We're going to receive a reminder that his body was broken for us and his blood was poured out. So if you've got some bread and some wine or however you're doing it, we've got people in our church right now that are using Coke and a hobnob uh, every week. Uh, so we call it an agape meal uh, in our church. Others who are telling me they're drinking a vast amount of wine. Not quite sure, so sure about the vast amount, but anyway, <laughs> there's all sorts of things happening uh, at this stage. But it's this reminder, it's a reminder, isn't it, of God's death, sending his son to die and rise again for you and me. So Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, verse 11, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, took the cup of wine and after given thanks. He said, this blood, this cup is the, my blood for the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many in remembrance of of me do this as often as you drink it to remember my death and my resurrection and therefore whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes again there is something mystical mysterious wonderful when we share bread and wine together in this wonderful meal Therefore, Paul goes on, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup and confess any wrongdoing in them. So let's just take a moment to confess our sin before God, just in the quietness of our own hearts. You know, sin really isn't a dirty word. It's just those mistakes that we make, those ways that we let um, God down. Things we think, things we say, the actions that we do. 
And the Bible just tells us to repent, to go in another direction. It's not that bloke on the street corner wagging his finger. It's just telling us, Lord, help me to go in a new direction. So let's just take some time in quiet, allow those things to come to mind and ask for God's forgiveness. Bible's clear that when we confess our sin before God, he's faithful, forgives us for all of it, the small stuff, the huge stuff. And the Bible describes it as cleansing us from all unrighteousness. So in other words, washing us clean, making us right again inside. So let's just share this simple meal together. And now as we close our time together, let's just pray God's blessing on us. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit may it rest upon you and all those that you love. I'll call God's blessing in a new and deep way on you as a church family and on the bowers as they lead you. That you would know God's blessing in incredible measure. Through the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guys, it's been fantastic to be with you. I look forward to incredible stories of what's going to happen for Alan's ministry and uh, uh, over the next season of the life of St Saviour's. Um, until I see you again, whenever uh, that may be, uh, stay safe and be really blessed by our Father in heaven.